Hello and welcome to this edition of Tech Talk. This is where we will bring technical experts from Cisco to share their insights on specific topics. Selectively chosen based on most common conversation themes on our technology area on community. It's an effort to share valuable insight from Cisco experts on those popular themes. We hope you will like it. My name is Vinay Sharma and I'm the technical community manager at Cisco. And today our discussion topic will be migration best practices for ASA 8.3 and 8.4. Our expert joining me today is Glenn Baptist. He's a customer support engineer in Cisco TAC based in India with a great broad experience with Cisco firewalls like ASA, PIX, and FWSM. He also holds a CCI certification in security. Welcome, Glenn. Hey, thanks, Vinay. Today we will discuss about ASA 8.3 migration. What you need to know before the migration and the best practices along the few key points and features to keep in mind before the upgrade. With that in mind, Glenn, tell me first what all major changes do, have you seen in 8.3? Thanks, Vinay. Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, significant changes made in the 8.3 version. Mm -hmm. uh, most importantly, uh, the NAT command. Uh, the NAT command has been uh, redesigned completely for increased flexibility and functionality. We now can configure auto NAT wherein you configure a NAT within an object and we have the manual NAT for more advanced options. Uh, apart from this, we also have a new concept of network objects. Uh, network objects are automatically created uh, during migration. Uh, this would only be migrated automatically for uh, the NAT statements, but for other features it wouldn't. Also we have another change in with respect to the real IP, whereas in the pre-8.3 version we used to add a translated IP address in the access list, whereas now we used to add, we, we can add real IP addresses uh, in the access list. Thus, any changes in the NAT configuration, you do not have to change anything with the access list. Okay. So that way, it's one of the major changes that you have to take care of. Okay, here is an example of the real IP. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see uh, our internal host behind the ASA. Right. So ASA is protecting this host by translating the private IP address to the public IP address of 1.1.1.1. Uh, well, the clients in the uh, internet would access this particular server using the public IP address 1.1.1.1. One dot, one dot, one dot one. Right. So coming to the pre-8.3 version, uh, we used to add an access list in which we used to configure the translated IP address, in this case, which is 1.1.1.1 dot, one dot, one dot one in the access list. Coming to the 8.3 and higher codes, we configure the real IP address, which is the not translated, which is the untranslated IP address in the access list specified in the inbound direction. So this is one of the major changes that you might be uh, want to be aware right, of. Right. Okay, now let's talk about few best practices. Uh, before you migrate, uh, it was always good for you to know the memory requirements. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, to run version 8.3, you need to make sure you know the memory requirements well. Uh, the memory requirements would be, uh, if I can point out to a couple of ASAs, it would be 5505, 5510, 5520 and 5540. Again, in case you've purchased an ASA after Feb 2010, uh, the memory would be already upgraded. But if you have purchased an ASA before Feb 2010, then in that case you would definitely would have to buy a memory and upgrade prior to uh, going to 8.3. So Glenn, I have found one question. Mm -hmm. You know, which is related to the memory upgrade which you just discussed and one of our community user, Chris, he would like to know, why does ASA need a memory upgrade? Oh, well, that's been a question um, most commonly asked. True. Uh, yes, uh, since, that, uh, since the ASA was manufactured uh, first, so it wasn't, I mean, the memory wasn't changed at all. Mm -hmm. So now, as you know, uh, since the time the ASA was introduced, we have a lot of features that's coming up with every code. Right. So in order to make sure that we have enough memory for the customers to use these uh, new features, we have come up with a memory requirement. Well. Uh, this memory is required at boot, and if in case you want to use more features, then you definitely need additional memory. So mm -hmm. this is one of the reasons as to why we came up with the memory upgrade. Thanks for the explanation. Sure. All right, so uh, we were talking about the best practices. And here on the screen, you can also see as to if in case you haven't upgraded your memory before the migration, you would see uh, this particular output on the screen when you log into your ASA. Well, uh, as you can see in this screen, it is clearly mentioned that 
the memory requirement is not met and it tells you as to what memory you have right now and what would be the memory that you have to go to. So be careful before you upgrade. Oh well, sometimes so happens that uh, you are not really comfortable with the upgrade. There might be some things missing. Well, how do you find that? So what you can do is you can use this particular command, show startup config errors, wherein it gives you all the errors mm -hmm. that the ASA saw during boot up. Okay. So if in case you have to know as to what messages, or let's say the ACLs are not migrated properly, so you can go and do a show startup config error, and that would show you all the errors during boot up. So here is one of the uh, sample logs that I've taken from the output, and it should show something like this. So just have a look at it. All right, uh, one other thing that you need to follow would be to disable no NAT control before the migration. Well, uh, no NAT, or rather the NAT control is a legacy feature which was introduced for the customers to migrate comfortably from the PICs to the ASA. Well, now, uh, we would like the ASA to act like a router wherein we now uh, define the policies based on access list and we make sure that the access list controls the traffic while moving from one interface to the other. Mm -hmm. So that way we need to make sure that no NAT rule is disabled before the migration. Okay, so uh, Glenn, like you mentioned that uh, the no NAT rule should be disabled. So what will happen in case if it is not disabled before the migration and uh, uh, this question has been asked by many users and I'm specifically talking about uh, Will, who has put this question on the community. Okay. Uh, yes, we would definitely recommend you to disable no NAT control before moving to the uh, 8.3 version. Mm -hmm. But let's say you haven't uh, disabled, disabled that yeah. and, uh, uh, well, you might face a lot of problems. If you have not disabled NAT control, uh, the, basically the NAT commands would uh, increase exponentially based on the number of interfaces the ASA has. So in that case, I mean, you will have a lot of unnecessary oh. commands right. in the uh, configuration. So mm -hmm. in order to avoid that, it was always good for you to uh, disable known air control. Right. Yeah. Good, good explanation. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. And in fact, uh, you know, before we move to the next section, okay. I have uh, another similar question, uh, which is what will happen if the migration does not go well? And uh, is there a way we can restore it to the previous good configuration? Uh, well, yes, certainly. Uh, you can uh, restore your uh, previous configuration mm -hmm. using the downgrade command. So oh, we have a okay. command which would actually get you back to the previous version uh, without any issues. So what you can do is whenever you migrate to the uh, 8.3 version, mm -hmm. the ASA would uh, store a pre-configuration, that is the previous configuration into the flash. So all that you have to do is uh, use the downgrade command to get back to the previous version plus have the previous configuration. So as you can see, uh, here is the uh, command how it looks. Mm -hmm. Basically you need to specify the downgrade keyword followed by the version that you want to uh, downgrade it to, followed by, again, the file that is stored on the ASA right. during the migration. Mm -hmm. So that would consist of the pre-upgraded configuration, which would be used in this particular command. Very good uh, yeah. explanation. Thank you. OK, now, well, you know, uh, 8.3 has been a major version which has come up. Right. And we have new features as well. One of the features that you might be interested would be the failover license. The failover licenses on both the uh, ASAs need not be the same now. So what happens is in 8.3.1, starting from 8.3.1, your both the ASA failover units need not have the same license keys. So even if there's mismatching, what it does is you will have a combined uh, license uh, there on the ASA. Mm -hmm. So that way you do not have to purchase another license for your standby unit. Right. I, I believe this is a very good relief for all the customers. Oh, definitely right. it is. Okay. So you don't have to worry about the mismatch in licenses anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming to the 8.4 now, uh, we have another brilliant uh, new feature in the ASA. Whereas in the pre-8.3 uh, version, we used to have uh, issues with dynamic routes being replicated to the standby unit mm -hmm. upon failover. Well, that's not there anymore. Uh, starting from 8.4.1, we have a feature wherein even the dynamic routes are replicated to the standby unit without uh, having issues of losing them. So this oh. way, we have our production running and uh, this would cause minimal disruption in the network right, because right. the routes are there right now. Right. So this is one. And also, there's been another uh, feature in the 842 wherein uh, the ASA has a feature wherein it can add a route lookup keyword at the end of the NAT statement. Okay. Uh, in the previous 8.2 versions, uh, 
we did not have an option to change the default setting, which is uh, the route lookup used to happen first, then the NAT translation. Right. Well, in 842, uh, we have an option wherein we can change this default setting by adding a keyword route lookup at the end of the NAT statement. Mm -hmm. Now, we can actually force the ASA to do a route lookup after the translation has been done. So basically, the NAT translation would happen first, then the route lookup can happen. So this changes can be uh, configured based on your requirement. You can either uh, go back to how it was in pre 83 or you can actually change it the way you want it. So okay. that's one of the good features mm -hmm. that I would like to distress. So uh, Glenn, like you mentioned about uh, the NAT, uh, the route lookup. So since you told about you know a couple of new features uh, which is introduced in 8.3 is there a way in which uh, you know we could know all what all new features are introduced in different codes because in the release notes we can get a particular code uh, new features so is there any resource available where we can compare different codes and different features oh uh, definitely we do have a, a particular a common repository wherein uh, other than you going to that particular code and mm -hmm. finding the uh, information under that release notes, right. you can actually uh, compare the new features that's been introduced in the pre previous code as well as the new code. Well, uh, as you can see on the screen, mm -hmm. we have a list of commands or list of codes starting from 7.0, which was uh, the first code introduced on the ASA, till the latest 8.4. 8441 if I'm not wrong yes so we can actually have a comparison of what are the new features that's been there and what's the difference between the two codes so you can actually uh, check this side out great, great information in fact uh, the customer just opened this you know resource and compare what whether they are running on the pre 8.3 and post 8.3 were all new features or the previous releases as well true uh, fantastic uh, now that we spoke about uh, a few new features right. uh, let's see as to what are the known issues that we have observed during the migration mm -hmm. Uh, one of the uh, issues that we have found in after the migration is uh, wherein the ASA would uh, add the unidirectional keyword at the end of the NAT manual NAT statements. Mm -hmm. So this happens when you migrate from the pre-8.2 version to the uh, 8.3.2 version. So uh, basically, w you see, we have NAT exam statements which are bidirectional in the pre-8.2 version and it's again bidirectional. So uh, when you upgrade your code from pre-8.2 version, to the 8.32 version, mm -hmm. the ASA would add unidirectional keyword. Hence, uh, the NAT exempt rules are not bidirectional anymore, and hence, you will have to remove the unidirectional keywords manually. Another way to get around this problem would be to migrate to 8.31 first, and then go to 8.32. Okay. So, please be aware of this particular bug, which is mentioned here. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from this, there's one other known issue, uh, which I really want to talk to you about. Uh, which is uh, after the migration to 8.3, uh, the real IP addresses are not migrated properly. Uh, when I say real IP addresses, as I've explained it earlier, uh, basically when you go to the latest 8.3 code, mm -hmm. you need to configure the real IP address instead of the mapped IP address on right. the access list. Well, this doesn't uh, hold true. Sometimes we have faced issues wherein after the upgrade, the access list remains the same, which contains the mapped IP address. Well, we have tested this in our lab, and it looks like the NAT exempt rule, having a, any keyword in the access list entry would cause this. So my advice here would be for you to make sure that the any keyword in the NAT, uh, NAT exempt rule would be removed, or you can just remove the NAT exempt rule, which has the any keyword mentioned in it. So this would actually make the migration go smooth, and after the migration, you will have the real IP addresses in the access list. So thanks, Glenn, for uh, explaining the known issues. Uh, we have a couple of questions and a uh, lot of users who would like to know that if they are hitting a bug on ASA 8.2 version, okay. so will the fix will be introduced in the same version or they need to go to the higher version? Uh, well, uh, if you have any issues in the 8.2 train, mm -hmm. it would be resolved in the 8.2 itself because 8.2 is fully supported mm -hmm. and it's the active train. So you don't have to uh, worry about going to the latest version if in case you find a bug on the 8.2. So you can be sure about it. All right. So, uh, Joanne, who would like to know that uh, he's running pre-8.3 version. Okay. Right. So, is it a must to upgrade to the latest code? Oh, well, if you're happy about uh, the 8.2, if you're ha if your ASA or if your network is stable mm -hmm. in the 8.2 and, and you're seeing no issues at all, well, uh, why do you want to go to the higher uh, version? As I've told you, 8.2 is completely supported, mm -hmm. and you can stay in the 8.2 as long as everything's fine. Okay. And... Uh, Another question which uh, which comes in the mind uh, 
uh, and a lot of people uh, would like to know that when they should upgrade to the latest version, right? Because if it is released and uh, they would like to know that when it's the right time to go for the latest version. Okay, so your question is as to uh, when would you go to the 8.3 or True. the 8.4 right. version? Uh, well, yes, let's say as I've uh, explained a couple of new features, mm -hmm. uh, let's say you want to access the or you want to use the uh, failover license feature. Well, you can't stay on the 8.2 anymore. So if you want to use right. those features, well, go to 8.3 and feel free to use it. So right. what I'm trying to say is when you feel that you, as per your requirements, you need to access or configure those features in your ASA, mm -hmm. feel free to upgrade to the uh, latest version. Right. So uh, in short, uh, if you are feeling that uh, your 8.2 code is working fine and you don't need any new feature you can stay on 8.2 and if you hit any known issue then you can migrate you can you know wait for the 8.2 to get that fixed yep. if you're looking for something new like 8.3 features what uh, Glenn has said then you can go for the 8.3 perfect right uh, another question which which comes in my mind is uh, does the upgrade procedure differ you know uh, migrating to 8.3 and above or is it the same the uh, conventional method uh, well the migration uh, or the upgrade process remains the same mm -hmm. uh, as as always uh, we need to copy the image onto the flash uh, we need to set the boot variable uh, and then reboot done so your upgrade is done okay so that's it it remains the same there's no changes absolutely all right so uh, another user Anastasius uh, who would like to know the upgrade path you know when migrating from pre-8.3 to 8.3 or above. Is okay. it uh, we need to follow a specific migration path for that? Uh, well, Cisco recommends you to be in 8.2 before moving to 8.3. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say in case you are uh, running a code which is pre-8.2, let's say for example 8.0 or 7.0. Mm -hmm. In that case, you need to go stepwise to 8.2 first, then upgrade to 8.3. Okay. So you need to follow that step. But right. as I said, Cisco would uh, recommend you to upgrade from 8.2 to 8.3. So make sure you're in 8.2 before the 8.3 migration. Great. Yep. Great. Thank you, Glenn, for sharing your expertise with us. You're welcome. Hope this Tech Talk was useful to you, and we look forward for your feedback. You can also send in your feedback using the comments section. You may also ask questions and collaborate via various social channels like Facebook and Twitter. You can also catch us on YouTube, iTunes, and LinkedIn. Goodbye and thanks for watching.